Being called to come over like this is really the worst. I needed to be hospitalized due to an injury, so I asked my daughter-in-law, Emma, to sign as my guarantor. However, Emma just complained the entire time. She already knows I live on a monthly pension of $700 and mocks me for it. The wedding gift was just over $100, so cheap, really unbelievable. Every time I see her, she always complains, and I'm fed up with it. I can manage quite well on $700 a month, so why do I have to be belittled like this? Isn't the sentiment behind a wedding gift that's important? To be judged solely on the amount of money? Talking to Anna makes me feel awful, so I tried to avoid her as much as possible. Then Emma told me she wanted to cut ties with me, I really can't take care of you in your old age just because I'm the eldest son's wife. This can't happen. She probably thought I would be troubled if she cut ties with me. Emma had a triumphant smile. Are you sure about this? Ignoring the confused Emma, I decided to sever our relationship. A few months later, Emma found out something shocking and stormed into my house yelling. My name is May, 68 years old, living alone in New York City. My husband passed away two years ago due to a chronic illness. Now, my younger son and his wife live nearby and often check on me. My eldest son, John, works for an international company and is very busy, so he doesn't come home often, but he sends flowers and gifts for my birthday and Mother's Day every year. At 38, this kind son of mine finally told me he had someone he wanted to marry. We decided to meet at home, and John brought him all over. She was very cheerful, and our first meeting went smoothly, and everything quickly led to their marriage. The ceremony was scheduled six months later to accommodate John's busy schedule, but I brought a wedding gift to his house to celebrate their marriage. Thank you so much for today, Mill. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm just here to give you a wedding gift. Well, I'm so happy. I gave Emma the dishes I bought as a wedding gift. I planned to help financially during the ceremony, but I wanted to give them something, and since they probably already had furniture, I chose dishes after much deliberation. However, Anna's reaction changed instantly upon seeing the wedding gift. What? This is the wedding gift? Yes, it's a set of bowls and plates. I thought they were cute, so I bought them. Don't you like them? I was worried it didn't match her taste, but her response was unexpected. Isn't this such a cheap gift for a wedding? Cheap. Unbelievable. For a wedding gift, you should give around 10,000. I thought you were wealthy because you live in a nice house, but was I wrong, Emma? I was baffled by Emma's sudden change. Her gestures and tone were completely different, there was no trace of the polite and cheerful Emma when we met for the first time. So, how do you live now, Mill? On my pension. But how much is your pension? Seven hundred dollars. Ha! Are you really that poor? I feel like I was lied to, living in such a nice house, but being poor is the worst. Emma crossed her legs and sighed. Living on $700 a month, that's so sad. How do you even survive? Emma's mocking tone irritated me. I can manage just fine on $700 a month. Oh, really? Well, just don't come asking for help when you're short on money. Emma was the type of person who changed her attitude based on income and assets. Feeling belittled, I went home immediately. For about a month, I thought several times about telling my eldest son, John, about Emma's true nature. However, our schedules didn't align, so I couldn't tell him. I spent my days feeling uneasy. One day, while waiting at a traffic light, I was hit by a speeding bike and broke my arm. It wasn't a major injury, but I needed surgery and had to be hospitalized. The hospital required a guarantor, so I was asked to call a family member. When I messaged my sons, John called me. Mom, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I'm on painkillers right now. About the guarantor signature, neither Mike nor I can come, so I'll send Emma. Emma? 
Yeah, it's a weekday, and if we did it, it would be after work and past visiting hours. Emma doesn't work, so she can do it. I see. Honestly, I didn't want to see Emma, but I couldn't be selfish. My younger son, Mike, and his wife, Lily, were both teachers. They worked late every day and were also raising two kids, so they were very busy. John also often didn't get home until after 10 p.m. I couldn't ask them, so I asked John to have Emma come. When Emma arrived at the hospital, she was obviously in a bad mood. Being called to come over like this is really the worst. Sorry, everyone else is at work. Just because I'm a housewife doesn't mean I'm free. I expected complaints, but her blatant attitude made me angry. Can you afford the hospital bills? Of course, I'll pay myself. Don't worry. Fine, just don't come begging for money later. From now on, the money John earns is not just his. She signed the papers with a smug smile and handed them to me. Honestly, dealing with this is such a hassle. Sorry about that. I'll try to ask someone else next time. Please do. Just thinking about more hospital stays and caregiving in the future is depressing. Her rude attitude made me want her to leave as soon as possible. I couldn't understand why I had to be treated like this when I didn't choose to be hospitalized. I'll be fine. Mike and Lily are here, and I'll make sure to be prepared not to trouble anyone. I tried to keep things civil with the nurses and other patients around. I didn't want to cause unnecessary trouble. Do whatever you want. When no one helps you, and you regret it, don't come crying to me. I'll make sure that doesn't happen. That's right, don't come back later saying it's because you're the eldest son's wife. If that's the case, let's cut ties right now. Emma probably thought mentioning cutting ties would trouble me, but I wouldn't be troubled at all if I cut ties with Emma. Even without my kids' support, I could manage in my old age just fine. I'm okay with it, but are you sure, Emma? Ha, huh, of course, I'm sure. Emma nodded, confused by my unexpected reaction, and likely thought that because I was poor and living alone, I would need my kids to take care of me. All right then, let's cut ties. I won't contact you again, and I'll delete your number. Do whatever you want. You're such an annoying old woman. Emma stomped off, making exaggeratedly loud footsteps, irritated by my nonchalant attitude. I had considered helping with the wedding costs, but seeing Emma's attitude, I decided not to provide any support. I wouldn't give any money to someone who talked about cutting ties. I vowed never to rely on Emma. I underwent surgery and was discharged a few weeks later. I continued my ordinary life while attending rehab. Even during my hospital stay, I remembered Emma talking about cutting ties and resolved not to rely on my kids, so I didn't ask for help with my post-discharge life. However, on the day I was discharged, my younger son, Mike, and his wife, Lily, came to help without saying anything, and it didn't stop there. They frequently helped with shopping and other tasks. Lily, you're busy with work, so you don't have to go out of your way. Isn't it inconvenient with just one arm? Don't hesitate to ask for help. I'm doing this because I want to. Lily's kindness touched my heart, even though there are such kind people. Thinking about Emma made me angry again. I haven't had any contact with Emma since then. I even called my son to say I might not attend the wedding, and I probably won't have any future interactions with her. Two weeks after my discharge, while being driven to the store, I noticed something unusual. Lily, doesn't the car make a strange noise? Yes, the side mirror is broken, and it keeps making that noise. It's an old car, so I think I have to replace it, but I'm unsure what to do. I see, but wouldn't it be inconvenient without a car? You drive to work, right? Yes, but even a small compact car costs a lot. Seeing Lily's concern, I made a suggestion. Then I'll buy you a new one. What? I can't accept such an expensive gift. It's fine. You've been helping me a lot. 
Consider it a thank you, but if you feel bad, just help me with shopping until my arm heals. When I said that, Lily smiled brightly. Of course, even after your arm heals, let's go shopping together. Her words made me smile too, so I bought Lily a new car. After that, Mike's family continued to visit and check on me, making me forget about Emma. A few weeks later, my injury had healed enough for me to carry light loads. One day, while watching TV at home, the doorbell rang suddenly. Looking at the monitor, I saw Emma standing there. What does she want after saying she wanted to cut ties? Feeling suspicious, I opened the door, and as soon as Emma saw my face, she shouted, Hey, what the hell is going on? What is it all of a sudden? I don't remember doing anything to be yelled at for. The other day, I met Lily, and she was driving a new car. So what? Don't play dumb. That car is worth over 10000 There's no way a schoolteacher with kids could afford it. When I asked her about it, she said you bought it for her. Yes, I did. She said her old car broke down, so I got her a new one. There's nothing wrong with buying a car for my son's wife. You never give me anything, but you give Lily a car. You're so unfair. If you can give away cars so easily, you should have given us more money for our wedding. Lily helps me with shopping and housework. You wanted to cut ties, so why would I give you any money? You're the one who wanted to cut ties. How could you afford a car worth over 10000 You don't have that kind of money. When did I ever say I was poor? I have real estate that I inherited from my husband. Real estate? Emma looks shocked. My husband was a businessman with a decent income and invested in real estate. He owned an apartment building, which I inherited when he passed away. I get rental income from it every month and have been saving steadily. I live off my pension just fine, but I enjoy traveling every year, so I save money for that. I'm not struggling financially. If worse comes to worst, I could sell the real estate and make a few hundred thousand dollars. A few hundred thousand dollars? If you have that much money, you should have said so. Why should I have to tell you? You just assumed I was poor. I never said I was struggling or needed to borrow money. Shut up, it pisses me off that you tricked me. I sighed, exasperated by Emma's childish tantrum. There's no way I'd flaunt my assets like that. Emma glared at me, clearly not satisfied. I wasn't deceiving you. Besides, I initially planned to help with the wedding costs, but you wanted to cut ties, so I didn't. Why? It's your son's wedding. Aren't you happy about it? I was happy about John's wedding, but I didn't want to give you any money. Why would you say that? If you have money, you should get it. Everyone's so stingy. It's infuriating. Emma started stomping her feet in frustration. It's embarrassing for a 30-year-old woman to act this way just because things aren't going her way. Why do you want money so badly, anyway? Duh, to have fun and buy the things I want. But John only gives me $2,000 a month and won't give me more. $2,000 a month isn't enough? Of course not, even a cheap bag would cost $5,000. I was stunned by her extravagant spending habits. I wondered why John fell for such a woman. Emma kept feeling and grumbling about how poor my son was. I married John because he seemed rich. If I had known he was this stingy, I wouldn't have married him. Is John really that stingy? Yes, he only gives me an extra $500 on top of the rent and living expenses, and gifts are just around $2,000. It's ridiculous. If he's making over $100,000 a year, he should give me more. I thought I could spend money more freely after getting married. So you're saying you married him for money? Of course, why else would I marry a man nearing his 40s? It's all about the money. I had reached my limit. I couldn't forgive her for disrespecting my son like that. Just as I was about to yell at her, John appeared behind Emma. 
then let's get a divorce. What? John, why are you here? Mom told me she wasn't coming to the wedding and said she'd cut ties with you, so I came to hear the full story and overheard your argument. You've said quite a lot. Oh, this is a misunderstanding. Emma stammered, sweating nervously. I hadn't noticed John arriving. Ignoring Emma's panic, I spoke to him. Thanks for coming. How long have you been here? From the point where you talked about being able to afford a car, despite being poor, so you heard most of it. She told me I'm poor and doesn't want to take care of me in my old age, so she wants to cut ties. That's the only reason I'm not going to the wedding. My son nodded with a serious expression. No more explanations needed. I understand Emma well enough now. No, it's a misunderstanding. It's not a misunderstanding. I clearly heard you say you married me for money. I can't stay with someone like that. Let's get a divorce. Wait, you can't do this now. I quit my job when we got married. Emma desperately grabbed my son's arm and shook it, but he shook her off and gave her a cold look. That's not my problem. I hope you find a new job soon. Don't be so cold. I can't live without you. I have no place to stay or savings. Why don't you sell those clothes and bags? That should get you through a few days, though I don't know if anyone will rent an apartment to someone without a job. No, don't say that. I bragged about our marriage to my friends. It would be so embarrassing to tell them the wedding is off. Please. That's your own doing. I hope you enjoyed being the subject of gossip. It was the first time I had seen my usually mild son this angry. Emma, pale and trembling, started to beg and apologize. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I won't say those things anymore. I don't even want money, just don't divorce me. No matter how much she apologized, my son's expression remained hard. I don't want to see your face anymore. Leave now. No, please reconsider this. Please. Let me make it clear. It's not just about the money. Telling my mom you don't want to take care of her and wanting to cut ties, how could you say that? If I had known you were so heartless, I wouldn't have married you. Emma started to cry, tears streaming down her face. Don't ever come near me again. Emma covered her face and sobbed, but no one comforted her. I felt relieved that my son understood her true nature. I was also relieved that he wouldn't be deceived by such a nasty person anymore. Understanding why I refused to attend a wedding, my son apologized and left. Emma, realizing it was over, gave me a fierce glare and walked away dejectedly. After that, my son and Emma divorced and she moved into a rundown apartment. Apparently, before the marriage, she worked as a department store receptionist but was about to be fired due to her bad work attitude. Unable to hold a job, she had hoped to marry a rich man to avoid having to work. With no skills or qualifications, Emma couldn't find a new job and ended up working in the nightlife industry. Over 30 and unable to make as much money as she had expected, she lived a miserable life, complaining all the time. Meanwhile, my son found a new girlfriend. I was worried it might be too soon, but when I met her, she seemed very kind and serious. She had been married before but divorced due to infidelity, which is how they started talking. It's funny how a divorce can lead to a new connection, but I feel more secure with her since I know her from work. My son said with a smile. I was happy my son had met someone kind and hope he would find happiness in a new family. Marriage isn't the only path to happiness. Many people choose not to marry these days, and there's no need to rush into it when you meet the right person and feel ready to marry. I hope my son finds a happy and fulfilling life ahead. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. 
We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.